There's going to be folks that's going to walk in this building that'll look different from us. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to honor them anyway. We're going to value them because they've been created in the image of God. Tell you something else we're going to value at Summit and Church of God. We're going to honor diversity. We're going to live out Galatians 3.28. God is all about honor. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, listen to what he says. He says to honor your father and your mother. Now listen, that's not just a southern preference. That is a biblical imperative. And I want you to notice that there is no expiration date on this. So whether you're in elementary school or whether you're in high school or whether you're in college or whether you're 54 years old like I am today, we are to always honor our father and our mother. We see in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, God is speaking. And God says, I will honor those who honor me and I will despise those who think lightly of me. Well, if the word honor means to be heavy or weighty, if we treat God lightly, then we're dishonoring him. Then we are profaning the name of God. But he said, I will honor those who honor me and I will despise those who think lightly of me. In Psalm chapter 8, verse 5, we get a glimpse of just how valuable every human being is to God. Because the psalmist said, you, God, have made man, that is men and women, a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned them with glory and honor. You hear me this morning, every human being that's been created in the image of God has been crowned with honor, and you and I are to treat every human being with value because they are created in the image of God. Amen? We look in the Bible in Romans chapter 12, verse 10, for some of you that have more of a competitive bent to you. He said to love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Paul is saying to us literally that, that we should bend over backwards to try to outdo the other people in our lives when it comes to showing them honor. We go to Romans chapter 13 verse 7. And listen to what Paul says. This is so important. He said give to everyone what you owe them. Pay your taxes and government fees. I won't ask for an amen there, but how about an owe me? Because <laughs> none of us like doing that. But he says, pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them. And then he says, and give respect and honor to those who are in authority. Listen, it is a shame how... The government leaders, especially the president of the United States, it is a shame how people continue to dishonor him, whomever it may be, previous or present, that we would dishonor them by our actions or by the words that we speak. You say, but pastor, how can I honor someone that would be so against the purpose and the plan of God for our nation? Well, understand, in this passage of Scripture, Paul is speaking about honoring emperors, emperors who felt that they deserved to be worshiped. As a matter of fact, you would have to bow before them and you would have to worship them and declare them Lord rather than Christ as Lord. We also see that through those emperors, there was a wave of persecution that was unleashed against the church that took the lives of many Christians. But notice what Paul says. He says, still, you are to lead the way in showing those in authority. You are to show them honor. You are to show them value and you are to show them significance. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, he says that we need to honor our spiritual leaders. He said it like this. He said, the elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honor. 
especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. And then he goes on in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, and evidently the writers of the New Testament understood that honor was attached to a successful marriage because they said, let marriage be held in honor among all. And then the apostle Paul says, even though the word honor is not mentioned here, it's implied, he said, each man must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect or honor her husband. There should be honor taking place between husbands and wives and wives and husbands. And then for some of you that's looking for a loophole this morning to get around this issue of honor, Paul says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 17, honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God and honor the emperor. So here's what we're wanting to do at Summerton Church of God. We are wanting to ignite a culture of honor. We are wanting to begin a revolution of honor among these people in this house. And what does that look like? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to honor up. Everybody say we're going to honor up. We're going to honor down. And we're going to honor all around. Now, I'm not the first one to use this phrase. You've probably heard it before. But we're going to honor up, honor down, and honor all around. Now, what do we mean by that? Well, when we talk about honoring up, that means that we are going to honor God. We're going to honor God with our actions. We're going to honor God with our attitudes. We're going to honor God with our words. We're going to honor God with our behavior. But not only are we going to honor God, we're also going to honor those that God has placed over us in authority. That means that we're going to honor our governmental leaders. We are going to honor our policemen. We are going to honor our firemen. Somebody help me here this morning. They are worthy of our honor, amen? We're going to honor them. We're going to ascribe value to them. We're going to encourage them. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to honor those who are over me in the Lord. I'm going to honor my administrative bishop, my state overseer. I'm going to honor him. I'm going to honor the others that the Lord has placed in authority over my life. And instead of complaining about them and instead of dissing them to my friends, what I'm going to do is I'm going to encourage them and I'm going to affirm them and I'm going to build them up in the most holy faith. It's honor. So we're going to honor up. But not only are we going to honor up, we're also going to honor down. Now please don't take this as a condescending statement. That's not what it is. But that means as parents that we're going to honor our children. We're going to honor them. It means that we're going to honor those who serve us, who work for us our employees. It means that when we leave here today, if we go to a restaurant and we order a meal, that we don't run the feet off of our server and be demanding and then stiff them on a tip. And if you do, please don't tell them that you're from Summerton Church of God because we're building a culture of honor in the house. And not just in the house, but in our community. That we're letting people know they're important to us and they they have value because they are created in the image of God. And so our default mode of behavior is going to be, we're going to honor those above. We're going to honor those beneath. And we're going to honor those around us. That means I'm going to honor my spouse. I'm going to honor my family. I'm going to honor my coworkers. I'm going to honor my neighbors. Let let me just tell you a little bit what that looks like. Let me tell you what we're going to do here at Summit and Church of God. We are going to honor, we're going to continue to honor our senior adults. Amen? We're going to honor our senior adults. We're going to appreciate the value. We're going to appreciate the insight. We're going to appreciate the wealth of wisdom that those who are experienced can bring to the table. Those who have been there and done that can help us where we are and where we're going. Somebody say amen to that. 
We're going to honor our senior adults. But let me tell you what else we're going to do. We're going to honor people who are different from us. Not everybody that walks through these doors are going to look like us. And not everybody that walks through these doors are going to act like us. There may be some that walk in that's got tattoos from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. That's okay. God's got a tattoo. The Bible says that he has your name engraved in the palm of his hand. Sound like a tattoo to me. And there may be some. Now listen, I'm not saying everybody go out and get a tattoo. Please don't leave. Everybody's saying that. Pastor says we all go get. No, that's not what I'm saying. But there's going to be folks that's going to walk in this building that'll look different from us. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to honor them anyway. We're going to value them because they've been created in the image of God. To tell you something else, we're going to value at Summerton Church of God. We're going to honor diversity. We're going to live out Galatians 3.28 that says there's neither Jew nor Gentile, bond or free, male or female, but we are all one and the same and equal in the great big family of God. Amen. We're going to honor every generation. We're going to honor our youth, our students. Instead of saying to them, one day when you grow up, you can make a difference. And one day when you grow up, maybe we'll listen to what you have to say. No, what we're saying to you this morning, what I'm saying to you this morning as your pastor is, you matter now. You matter now. And right now you can be an example in life. And right now you can be an example in purity. And right now you can be an example in behavior. And right now you can be an example in character. And right now you can be an example in conduct. And right now you can lead in the great big kingdom of God. Somebody say amen to that. Praise God. Going to honor our youth. And listen to me, we're going to honor our children in this house. They deserve our attention. They deserve the best that we have to offer. The best of our facilities, the best of our resources, the best of everything that we can possibly give them to invest into that generation. We are going to honor our children because they deserve our time. They deserve our attention. They deserve our energy. We are starting a cultural revolution. We are starting a culture of honor at Summit and Church of God where everybody feels valued and important in the kingdom of God. Can we one more time give God a praise for that amen and let me tell you why this matters why honor matters first of all the honor we give is determined by the value we perceive you see if I if I perceive and see you as valuable created in the image of God then I'm going to honor you but if I don't see you that way and perceive you that way, I will dishonor you. I will treat you as common, as ordinary. Because the honor that we give is determined by the value that we perceive. 430 years before Christ came, there was a prophet that God spoke through by the name of Malachi. And Malachi had to prophesy during a time when the nation of Israel was in a downward spiral. The entire nation was in a spiritual crisis. The economy had tanked, and they had been in a recession for years. Even marriages were being affected. And they had a horrible attitude about marriage and about divorce. And, and this, was, this was the nation that God spoke through Malachi and, and he said, here's the message that I'm giving you to speak to this people. I want you to address their issue of dishonoring me. He said, that's the reason why everything else is happening in the nation like it is, is because I am being dishonored. And notice in Malachi chapter one, verse six, he said that a son honors his father and a slave his master. And so God says, if I'm a father, where is the honor due me? And if I'm a master, where is the respect due me, says the Lord Almighty. 
And then he goes to Malachi 1 verse 11. And I want to read this in the message paraphrase because I think it gives it to us a little clearer. But he said, I'm honored all over the world. Now notice, this is God speaking to his people. He's tending the family business here. Okay, and he speaks to his kids. And he said, I'm honored all over the world and there are people who know how to worship me all over the world who honor me by bringing their best to me. He said, they're saying it everywhere. God is greater. This God of the angel armies. And then he looks at his kids and he says, everybody but you. And he said, instead of honoring me, you profane me. And he said, you profane me when you say, worship's not important. And what we bring to worship is no account. And then he says, you, you profane me when you say, I'm bored. This doesn't do anything for me. Now, now you've got to understand that this is a nation. This is a group of people that when God first redeemed them from bondage and gave them a promised land, that they felt so undeserving of God's love and they felt so undeserving of God's grace and they could not wait to get to the house of the Lord to worship and they could not get through a worship experience without breaking down over thinking about how grateful they were for God's love and God's grace and God's forgiveness in their life but not now, things have changed. And now they come to worship and they say, well, worship's not important. And what we bring and offer to God is not important. Church has just gotten boring. Worship has gotten boring. It doesn't do anything for me, they were saying. And then God goes on and he says, you act so superior. Sticking your noses in the air. Act superior to me, God of the angel armies. And when you do offer something to me, it's a hand-me-down or broken or useless. Do you think I'm going to accept it? This is God speaking to you. Those are some strong words from God about dishonor. You see, here's what God understood. God understood that when we really value something or someone, that we do at least three things. We either praise it, we protect it, or we prioritize it. You see, when you get around someone and you begin to have a conversation with them, it doesn't take you long to find out what that individual is passionate about because they can't help but praise it. They'll either start talking about their spouse or they'll start talking about their children or they'll start talking about their football team, you know? Because what we value, what we honor, we praise it. We can't help but talk about it. But not only do we praise it, we protect it. That's why I've had this for 33 and a half years, this ship. I've protected it through every move that we've made. Every time that thing's been in transition, I've made sure that it was protected. I made sure that it wouldn't get broken. I made sure that it was preserved. Why? Because I value it. It's important to me. And then a third thing is we prioritize it. Because what's important to us, it gets our time. It gets our energy. It gets our resources. And so God was just simply saying that what we value, we praise it, we protect it, we prioritize it. But God looked at those people and he said, you're not doing anything like that with me any longer. He said, you're like these people in Isaiah 29, 13 that he spoke to that said, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They act like they're worshiping, but they don't really mean it. Let me give you another example. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 13, verse 53, it says that when Jesus had finished these parables, he moved on from there and coming to his hometown, not the town where he was born in Bethlehem, but to Nazareth where he grew up, it said that he began teaching the people in their synagogue and they were amazed. Now notice, Jesus has been out on a mission of ministry. All kind of miracles have been performed. He has taught some powerful things. And the people are amazed at those miracles. They're amazed at his teaching. It said he began teaching the people in the synagogues. And they were amazed. And they said, where did this man get this wisdom 
and these miraculous powers, they ask. And then all of a sudden, somebody spoke up and said, oh, wait a minute. Isn't this just the carpenter's son? Isn't this young man's mother, isn't his mother Mary, and aren't his brothers Joseph and James and Simeon and Judas, and aren't all of his sisters with us? When then did this man get all these things? And notice what happens now. And they took offense at Jesus. But Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own town and in his own home. And look at what happened as a result of them dishonoring Jesus. It said that he was not able to do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. Folks, could it be that we're not seeing many miracles? Because when we come together to worship, we are dishonoring that we have become so accustomed to and we have become so comfortable with who Jesus is that we think he's just another one of the guys, that he's just another one of the prophets, or he's just another one of the writers of Scripture. Listen to me. We're talking about Jesus. We're talking about the Son of God. We're talking about God in the flesh. We're talking about one who is worthy of all of our worship, all of our glory, all of our praise. And I believe that we'll begin to see miracles like we've never seen miracles before or haven't seen them in a long time. When we come together, we make it a point to honor the King of kings and the Lord of Lords and to lift him up in this place. Hallelujah. Amen. Here's another reason why it matters. Honor strengthens, it builds up, it elevates everything around it. But dishonor destroys, brings down, and deteriorates. If I could do just a little another water illustration this morning. When we talk about how that honor strengthens, how it builds up and elevates everything around it. You know, most people in life who are being disrespected and dishonored, they just kind of hover beneath the surface of the earth, depressed, down, And really all they need is for somebody to honor them. Really all they need is somebody that will help them realize just how valuable they are. I've got this little cork. Hopefully you can see that little orange cork in the bottom of this picture because see, here's what happens when we begin to pour in honor, when we begin to praise, when we begin to help people see how valuable they are. Notice what happens. that cork begins to rise to the level of honor and the level of praise that it receives. So what we want to do at Summerton Church of God is, is that every time somebody walks through these doors or every time we walk out of those doors, we pour in praise. We pour in honor. Parents, if you will do that to your children, can you imagine how it would change your kids? Kids, you know what? If you would do that with your parents, if you would praise, if you would honor, value your parents, do you know what they would do? Well, as soon as they got up off the floor from being passed out, do you know what they'd do? They're going to rise to that level of honor, praise and value that you've ascribed to them. But dishonor does just the opposite of that. Dishonor destroys, it brings down, it deteriorates. And that's why the nation of Israel in Malachi chapter 1, that's the reason why they were in the shape that they were in because in Malachi chapter 1, it started with them dishonoring God. In Malachi chapter 2, now spouses are dishonoring one another. They're divorcing. The divorce rate is skyrocketing. You get to chapter 3, and now they are having all kind of ethical issues and problems, and God has to address that. God says, you've been robbing me. And then when you get to chapter 4, there's issues between parent and teen relationships, but it all started back in chapter 1 when they began to dishonor God because dishonor destroys, brings down, and deteriorates. But here's a, re a third reason and a final reason why honor matters. Now get this. This is so important. It's because honor is about what you decide, not necessarily about what they decide deserve 
It's about what you and I decide, not necessarily about what they deserve. And I can't help but think about my relationship with God. Musicians, you can come and get ready to close me down this morning. Because here's what God did. God decided that he was going to honor and crown every one of us with that honor. He decided. He did not do it because we deserved it, because none of us deserved it to be honored by God. But God decided to honor us. And Paul said it like this in Romans 5, 7 and 8. Now look at this. This is important. He said, now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Did you know that God, when he created man and crowned him with glory, crowned him with honor, it was while man was still in his sin. But God still loved and God still saw us as precious and God still saw us as valuable. And so he honored us because he wants us to rise to the level of his purpose for our lives. There is a passage of scripture in 2 Peter that talks about how that Sarah honored her husband Abraham and called him Lord. Now again, I'm not saying every lady when you leave here today that you need to go home and call your husband Lord. Now that might help him rise, get some honeydews done. But some people would say, well, if my husband was like Abraham, then I could honor him. Let me tell you something. Abraham was not always doing things God's way. Matter of fact, there were twice, there were two times when he went into Egypt and both times he looked at his wife who was a beautiful woman and he was afraid they were gonna kill him in order to take his wife away from him. And he looked at his wife and he said to her, listen, you tell them you're my sister so that they'll not kill me. He was willing to allow her, his wife, to be violated by another man to protect his own life. But here's what I believe. I believe Abraham became the man that he was because he had Sarah in his life. And even when he wasn't a man of God, she honored him like he was a man of God. And he rose to the occasion. You see, that's what will happen when we create this culture of honor. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's message entitled Creating a Culture of Honor. And that's exactly what we've decided to do here at Summerton Church of God. We are creating a culture of honor because we want everyone who walks through these doors to know that they are valuable and important to us and they're valuable and important to God. The psalmist reminds us that God created human beings and crowned us with honor. The Apostle Paul encourages us in Romans chapter 12, verse 10. And he says that we need to outdo one another when it comes to showing honor. That means we should be bending over backwards to outdo the other people in our lives when it comes to telling and when it comes to showing them how valuable and important they are to us and how valuable and important they are to God. I'm telling you, everything is better with honor. Our marriages are better with honor. Our families are better with honor. Our communities are better with honor. Our churches are better with honor. Our schools are better with honor. Everything is better with honor. And so we want you to know we love you. We want you to know you're valuable to us. We want you to know you're important to us and to God. And we'd like for you to be our guest here at Summerton Church of God. We worship every Sunday at 1045. This is a place where God is doing a new thing.